just two more quick questions. So. My name is Dwayne Crum. I'm with HIV Hope. We do training seminars around the world to empower people to create new ways of doing HIV education, especially in the area of prevention, which leads me to my question. Those of you on the panel who are living with HIV, I applaud your answer to uh, Nick's question about would you drink the cup if you knew then what you know now. On the other hand, as a prevention educator, what I heard from you is something that I have some concern about because if it, because it, it lead, could lead people to believe that having, living with HIV is a good thing and something to be sought after as opposed to something to be avoided because we, we need to be continuing to help people understand that, that yes, you can live and you can live very successfully with this virus, but also you want to avoid becoming infected. JP, how do you keep the balance? You drank the cup. How do you keep the balance? Yeah, I, uh, that, that's, I think, a profoundly good question. Um, and, and for me, um, the reality is that the life experiences I have are life experiences that I can either offer to God, in which case I grow by them, or they are life experiences which I don't, in which case I might become bitter. In many senses, it's not only HIV that has been the healing force in my life, but the fact that I was able to offer it to God. God then effects the healing. Um, HIV will remain a challenge. And even though I thank God that I am healthy, that I am a more whole person because of being able to come to terms with myself more fully, the reality is that every day I have to consciously take my medication. Every day I have to consciously say, these drugs are helping to keep me alive. And when I want to get sloppy and just say, does it really matter if I don't take my medication today? I still have to take it. Twice I have nearly died because of the medication, not the virus. And, and that teaches me that toxicity is real and managing HIV is complicated. So my message would definitely be HIV should at all costs be prevented. But if you find yourself living with HIV, don't try and beat yourself to death about it. Offer it to God and let God use it as healing in your life. Last question from that side of the room. My name is Rebecca Pritigo from the YWCA of Malawi and also board member for the y World YWCA. My question is um, particularly targeted at the Reverend JP, although I will be happy to get uh, input from the rest of the panel. Um, having followed some of your writings, I did read somewhere where you said that one of the difficulties that the faith community has in uh, the HIV response is that um, HIV preventive messages are centered on sex alone and that talking about the ABC approach and all that. I just wanted to get your thoughts on how the faith community can channel their input into those messages so that they're uh, religiously inspired, reaching young people, particularly on issues of sexuality and prevention. Pablo, I'm going to throw that to you again first. Yeah, and I would like to take just one minute to add also in, in the previous question. And I think that the person who asked that it's working on prevention, I think also works with a lot of young people talking about how to prevent HIV. And each time that I talk to a group of young people who's not living with HIV about my experience, I say, yeah, well, I have a very good life now in terms of what I do and the experience that I can make on talking to you about how not to get HIV also. But yeah, at the end, I, that's definitely, you have to take pills every day and that's something that it's totally not nice. Like, you can have a very good life and you can, yeah, but th there are things that definitely you are going to remember every day. Um, yeah, and for that question, I think that is something very, very important, which is 
doing and talking about sexuality with a faith perspective, but listening to the needs of young people. And that is something that we really need to work on because sometimes it's just about developing uh, talks or developing programs on how to prevent or how to talk about sexuality based on believings or based in ideologies. And we need to talk about sexuality based in the needs, actual needs of young people. And I think that's a, a big difference and that's when, what can make a, a very big difference to be open enough to understand the needs and based on the needs of young people then talk about sexuality, not do it from a, an ideology perspective. Pablo, thank you. And final question of the session. Okay, I'm Agnes Mendoza, physician from the Philippines and I'm a HIV advocate. We are connected with the Woodwater Center of Healing Chameleon Fathers. My question I'm addressing to Madam Miller, because in our haven, we have uh, a, um, one, of our uh, one of our clients there, we call them clients, uh, is a Muslim who has been ostracized by her family, by their religion. She wanted to transfer to the Catholic faith, but unfortunately could not accept it because of the political problem we have in our South, the Muslim Christian problem we have in the South, and we don't want to contribute to it anymore. So um, I, w I was thinking, how were you able to convince your, um, your religious leaders to accept you, to take care of you again? Because I was thinking that she has to get back in touch with her uh, Muslim faith first before she moves to our, another faith. Thank you. Okay, um, this is a question that I get very often. First of all, I would say, you know, um, this person need to really um, sit down with the religious leaders and educate them about HIV and AIDS. And this is the same thing that happened to me when my um, religious leader sort of ostracized me as well. I realized it's just a, a lack of knowledge. It's because they don't know much about HIV. That is why they have this attitude. So she should really, you know, not be afraid. I can understand how she feels but she should come up and speak openly, continue to speak about her own HIV status, not just to them, but also to other people, telling them, you know. And also, again, like I say, she, she, she should gain as much knowledge as possible about HIV, and then she can challenge them and say, but the Quran say this, the Quran say that, who are you to judge me? Okay? Thank you. Swamiji. Uh, last, uh, last year, I was invited to Mauritius, and I in, informed my colleague Swamini, who are there, Lady Swami, because Swami is a male, Swamini is a female. They told me, don't come to Mauritius to speak about this, because this is taboo in Mauritius. To speak about HIV, to speak about AIDS, this is taboo. I said, this is because it is taboo, I will come and I will speak about it. Though I'm not from Mauritius, that is why I am coming also. So I feel that all we religious people, we should be broad, broad, broad enough to um, speak and broad-minded enough to speak. We had, should have enough courage to go forward and speak whatever happens. We have to educate children also. In the reunion, we've got very nice experience. School children will go to church, to mosque, and to our Ashram Hindu temple to understand Hindu religion. And then they've got one idea. And as, I heard that some people told that I had AIDS. So then when the children came to me, I said, you, I, you heard that I've got AIDS? They said, yes, you've got AIDS. They said, no, I don't have AIDS. I am HIV positive. Then I explained to them what is HIV and what is to have AIDS. That is really totally different. I heard sometimes people telling that you have got AIDS. No, you can be HIV positive without AIDS. One lady, in, uh, one journalist in Mauritius asked me, when did you get AIDS? I asked her, when did you get cancer? She told me I don't have cancer. I told her I don't have AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> because you have got cells, your cells can become cancer. I am HIV, my HIV can give me AIDS. But till now I don't have AIDS, thank you. Now, I have to wrap it up, I'm afraid. There are many takeaways from this. Here are three that just stuck in my mind. Man uses guilt as a currency, but God uses love. I love that one. 
HIV is bigger than the church, but it ain't bigger than God. I love that one. We have to let HIV AIDS open up our hearts to the bigness of each other's religion and the bigness of God. You're probably all going to take your own away. I'll take these three and more. Um, it's been a wonderful session. I love the questions. I love the insights. And I'd just like to thank all of us to thank the panel of wounded healers that we have here, Pablo, Yvette, Fagmeda, Swamiji, and JP. You're inspirational. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Have a wonderful conference.